What's the future of oil and gas? We're at the headquarters of OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries in Vienna. The organization is at the very heart of questions around oil and gas globally, and we're meeting its director of research, Dr. Omar Abdul Hamid. The end of oil is near. We've often heard that sentence, but it really never turned out that way. What's the future of oil and gas over the next 20 years? Definitely, these uh, predictions about the end of oil have been exaggerated. Uh, there is plenty of resources in the ground to support the needs of demand. Around uh, 91 million barrels uh, every single day that is demanded uh, according to the numbers last year. Moving forward to the long term, uh, by 2040 we continue to anticipate uh, 111 million barrels uh, demanded of uh, oil per day. Some people say there are plenty of alternatives for oil. Do you think it's possible people would just lose their interest in oil long before it runs out? Well, if you have a historical perspective on the issue, uh, coal, for example, was dominant uh, before oil, when oil came into the markets as a reliable source of energy. We continue to live with the demand for coal, as well as a growing demand for uh, gas. One of the reasons why, for example, oil will continue to be at least in our forecast, a dominant source of energy, specifically in transportation, because there is continuous investment into the combustion engine. By the year, let's say, 2035, if you combine the expected uh, portion for uh, coal, oil, as well as gas, it will be roughly 80%, with the comparable percentages among the three. Is the DNA of the industry changing up to a point that cost will always be top of the mind for decades to come? You've noticed uh, the higher uh, price levels that were maintained in, in, at least in the uh, last few years. It might uh, breed some degree of complacency, if, if you will, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, it allows you to relax uh, in terms of your uh, costs. Uh, I think it is healthy to try to uh, uh, resort back to practices and plug-in innovations and technologies that will help you better control the cost of your operations. How will the industry embrace innovation over the coming years and which changes would need to happen? I think it's a, it's a wrong perception about the industry not being innovative. You can sustain uh, uh, cultures that might uh, at the first glance appear to be contradictory. Uh, we value uh, specifications, robustness and reliability from a safety perspective because you have a responsibility to do that uh, uh, to the whole industry and to community. At the same token, under the right controlled environments, you can foster uh, the development and testing of new technologies and gradually introduce them into your operations as long as you achieve a certain degree of reliability and controlled risk management uh, before you, uh, they become mainstream. What's the role of technology companies in this environment? What can a company like Siemens, for example, contribute to the industry? Definitely technology developers play a very significant role. Uh, Siemens uh, uh, and other uh, technology developers are very important to enable the industry to improve in terms of, for example, uh, the consumption of its own energy becoming more efficient we notice that uh, one of the trends in terms of uh, improving efficiency is to electrify. Uh, and I think it's uh, very important to continue to invest in these electrical options if they can demonstrate reliably there is a significant improvement in uh, efficiency. Operators invested into infrastructure uh, that they found reliable uh, and uh, that will take uh, some effort in order to convince them to move to the next uh, phase of technologies that can make them more efficient. So it's a bit like changing your car from gear shift to automatic, it might take a while. Exactly, and some of us uh, never took the time to learn how to shift gears and went to automatic uh, all the way. <laughs> what car do you have, automatic or gears? Automatic. <laughs> Diesel engine or uh, petrol? While in Vienna, I'm using a diesel engine. A diesel engine. Right, so uh, Omar, what would have to happen for you to exchange your diesel engine for an electrical motor? It will have to impact uh, how much I have to pay by the end of the day to transport from A to B. But I tell you, uh, 
being here, for example, in Vienna, the fact that you have an excellent public transportation system, uh, it, it offers you uh, alternatives in how you go from point A to point B. Uh, you might reserve the use of the vehicle, whether it's diesel or gasoline, uh, to specific trips outside the city. If you conveniently can use the public transportation or walk or use a tram. However, uh, the uh, inconveniences that are associated with the current uh, electrical vehicles will have to be addressed. The range, for example, with storage issues uh, in the vehicle itself, uh, having the right infrastructure to provide you with the necessary electrification, where you plug it in at home or find a station can recharge or exchange your batteries. In about 20 years, your kits will be in their mid-30s. Mm -hmm. Do you think it is more likely that by then they will be riding cars with combustion engines or electrical vehicles? I would say it depends where they are at, uh, at that time and so on. However, based on our forecast, we still continue to subscribe uh, to oil being a wonderful source of energy. I continue to uh, suggest to you that uh, transportation will continue to be dominated by uh, liquid fuels. Dr. Omar Abdul Hamid, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate the opportunity.